perspective of tonight, I'm going to be exploring on the topic of self-discovery. Now, let's start off this talk with two words, growth and change, two things that we all inevitably experience. Transition is a quandary for us, but we're not in control of our environment, but in the same time, we're not in control of our internal beings. And as human beings, we want that control because from that control, we find something called contentment. Now, contentment is not only measured in successes or achievements, but it's also measured in having a good and healthy relationship with your internal being. It's measured in knowing who you truly are, knowing your aspirations, your beliefs, your principles, your vision and mission as an individual. However, we all struggle with reaching this contentment. We all struggle with reaching self-discovery. And self-discovery is basically having a clear vision of yourself, having a visualization of your ideal self, having a sense of self-awareness, a sense of self-control. But we all struggle with it, although it is very pivotal for each and every one of us today. It's important for all of us because of three things. One, self-discovery helps us identify our values, and they help us to create decisions that align with these values that we've established. It helps us to make more worthwhile and more purposeful choices in our daily life. Next, self-discovery helps us to become more present in our environment. It helps us to become more productive in the activities we do because we're working towards a clear goal that we've set for ourselves. And finally, self-discovery Although this may sound really corny, self-discovery is great for our internal well-being. First of all, it gives us a sense of security because we know what we want, we know our purpose, we know our goal. Self-discovery gives us meaning, it gives us purpose. However, acknowledging all our struggles of self-discovery, I struggle with it too. Despite standing here talking to you about self-discovery, I face so many challenges of exploring who I am. For me, it's because I'm scared to step out of my comfort zone, try new things. That's something that's so challenging for me. And because I don't want to try new things or explore new domains, because of that, I can never discover new aspects or new characteristics that makes me who I am. Or maybe it's because you're so constricted to society's standards. You value society's views and perceptions too much. You're scared of judgment. And because of that, you don't remember your own personal values. You don't remember your own moral compass. And because of all these struggles that we face, let's break down our struggles into one um, category. From these struggles I mentioned, there are three similarities. Confinement, constrictions, and limitations. Because we're so limited to society's perspectives, we're so limited to being in our comfort zone, we cannot learn new things about who we are. And that's the problem about self-exploration. We don't want to delve into our passions or delve into our personality in a deeper extent. And that's why the four points I'll be introducing today will be based on these struggles. And these will help us in order for us to be more, be more de de delving into our self-discovery journey. Now, the four points will help us to help us to see self-discovery in a new perspective. To help us see self-discovery as a brighter future, a transformative future for each and every one of us. Because we have to enhance our self-discovery journey to benefit us. Or, for some people in this room today, start your own self-discovery journey. And talking about starting your self-discovery journey, there was actually a quote that motivated me to start my own. It's a quote by Steve Jobs. Stay hungry, stay foolish. It took me a long while to actually understood what he really meant. However, I recently just understood and recognized the true meaning behind his words. I realized how much it resonated to me in my self-discovery journey, and I hope that his quote can create an, an impact on your journey as well. Now, my first point is take a step. Ever since I was five years old, I loved music. I begged my parents to watch all the musical performances there was. I'd blast the radio in the car, and five-year-old me was obsessed with high school musical. However, despite taking so many musical courses, so many lessons, I never had the courage to actually step up on stage and actually perform, showcase my passion, showcase my talents. Of course, my parents were very frustrated, 
And when I was seven years old, they forced me to perform. But honestly, I could not thank them more for that. Because just that one experience of me stepping out of my comfort zone, trying something new, I was able to learn new aspects of who I am that I was not aware of before. I discovered three things from that one experience. First of all, I discovered that when I'm under the spotlight, instead of being overly nervous or anxious or feeling overwhelmed, instead, I was excited. The adrenaline gave me a surge of exhilaration. I look forward to the adrenaline. And another thing I realized was that I'm a very competitive person. Nothing could make me back down. When I've got my eyes on a goal, I'm never ever going to go back. There's no coming back. And from these two strengths, I've realized that these strengths are something that I really prioritize, and these are my values in life. This is how I base my decisions. Passion and dedication. There are two traits that are so important to me till this day. However, from that one experience, I've also discovered my weaknesses, my flaws as a human being. I realize that although I might have a very confident demeanor, although I might seem like I'm so sure of myself, inside I'm feeling so insecure. I question my abilities. I ask myself if I meet up the society's perceptions of who I am. I ask myself if they're going to judge me, if they won't like me. And to this day, I still have these insecurities. But self-discovery helps me acknowledge these insecurities. They help me validate the insecurities that I feel. And they help me realize what triggers these insecurities? What makes me feel this way? How can I cope with it? How can I adapt to my environment to mitigate these insecurities? And that's why to discover your authentic self, sometimes you must put yourself in unfamiliar, unpredictable, uncomfortable, inconvenient situations that you're not aware of. And that way you can see how you react, how you adapt to different environments. You can analyze your likes, your dislikes, your passions, and your aspirations by putting yourself in new environments and seeing how you react to those. And let's be honest here. Sometimes when we try something new, we find that what we tr like the new thing that we try, it's not, it's not the best for us. Sometimes we find that there's a certain activity that we dislike or a certain activity that we're weak at. However, take note of your weaknesses. Take note of your flaws. Because in the cycle of self-discovery, after self-discovery comes self-evaluation. And after that comes self-development. Evaluate the mistakes you've made. Evaluate your flaws. Evaluate your weaknesses. Evaluate what may make you have a negative emotion. And from that, you can develop on your character. You can realize how you can adopt a better behavior for the future. And that's why you must take a step out of your comfort zone. Take a step into a universe of opportunities. Step up your game. All you need to do is take a step. Now, the three C's. Connect, communicate, confide. Let's start with connecting. Connecting is the idea of creating a network with your environment. Outside school, one of my biggest passions is the performing arts. However, I've always wanted to perform the big stages of Broadway in Jakarta, but I felt like the community was so exclusive, and it was so difficult for me to actually get there. And because of that, my mom told me to contact one of my acquaintances, who's actually in the performing arts industry, and after I connected with her, she was so supportive. She helped me um, get recommendations of acting workshops, of auditions I could join, of communities I could be a part of to slowly emerge myself into the performing arts community. And so I did. I emerged into different communities. And as I met new people, as I, as I emerged myself into different environments of the performing arts, I realized how inspirational the experience was. I realized that you can gain so much knowledge and so much valuable insight by surrounding yourself with people who share a common ground, a common interest, and a common passion with you. Because to delve in deeper into your passion, to delve in deeper into what your aspirations are, you must surround yourself with people who share a common ground, a common perspective. 
And that way, you can be more connected with your passion, and you can understand and explore your passion even more. Next is communication. Now, unlike connection, communication is the idea of exchanging different views, whether they might be contradicting views or even controversial views. Although it's important to share a common ground, a common interest with a community of people, it's also really important to take note that you must be more all-rounded. You must understand and see the world in different perspectives. You must be able to see the world in different lenses. Because at the end of the day, we are all people in this world, and we must be able to validate, accept, and understand, and acknowledge all the different ideologies our world has. That way, you can see how people think, you can see what are the mechanisms of their thoughts and their ideologies, and you can see where you stand in your, in your life, and you can see how you can navigate yourself through your self-discovery journey. It helps you to be more aware in your environment, more conscious, and, and less subliminal to your society. Now, confiding. Confiding is the idea of exposing your true emotions. It's the idea of revealing your raw self. And confiding, for me personally, is the scariest part of this whole self-discovery journey. And I'm sure that for many of us today, confiding still remains a challenge for many of us. Although we can confide with people we love, we can also confide through journaling. And I feel this a more safer way, a more safe approach for me um, to confide to my feelings. As human beings, we often feel like we're not understood by the society, that we're not accepted, that our feelings are not validated. And by confiding, you can pour out your emotions and you can see what, what got you to that patching of behavior that you're experiencing or what got you to the, set, to the experience that you're angry or you're sad. Now, by confiding, it makes you vulnerable. And it's basically putting your heart on your sleeve. However, sometimes we have to validate our own emotions. We have to look and evaluate our emotions and say, this is how I feel, and that's okay. By confiding, you can see your patterns of behavior. You can see what led you to do a certain act. And you can also see your relationships with your environment. By journaling, I keep a track, I keep a record of how I feel, of my daily affirmations. And that way, I can also recognize my strengths and my weaknesses as a human being. And that way, I can develop my inner self. Because like I said before, in the cycle of self-discovery, after self-development comes self-acceptance. And confiding is a way to accept yourself, to appreciate who you are, and to tolerate with your strengths, your weaknesses, your characteristics as an individual. And that's why the three C's are important. They don't only help you to create a connection with your environment, they help you to create a stronger relationship with your inner self. Self-discovery is only about you, solely you. And let's talk about role models. Role models are amazing. They help us create clear visions of what we want to achieve. They help us navigate our way through, this, through our self-discovery journey, however, Role models can be dangerous. There's a thin line between inspiration and replication. And sometimes you say, oh, I aspire to be this person. Oh, this is my role model, this is my icon. However, we sometimes we don't realize that we're replicating their choices, we're replicating their decisions, we're replicating their ideologies in hopes that we can become that person. And that is dangerous. My role model in my life, is my dad, because he's a surgeon and he's a very dedicated person. He's really ambitious, he loves his job, he lights up when he tells me about his job, and that is something I want to have. That is something we all want to have, passion for our career. However, I've always wanted to become a med student, and I've realized now that ever since I was a kid, I will tell everyone that I wanted to go to med school, and because of that, I've never really considered other professions. In my head, I'm just saying, oh, I want to grow up to become my dad. I want to become a famous surgeon. I want to become a person who lights up when they talk about their work. However, I'm so constricted, so narrow-minded on this idea that being a med student is all I want to be in life, that I'm not considering other professions, I'm not looking at other opportunities, I'm not pursuing other passions, because I'm so constricted to this one idea. 
And that's why, although you may have role models, they set the example. They don't make the path for you. And I always told myself that when I want to grow up, I want to become just like my dad. And when I think about it now, that's so unhealthy. Because you must never want to grow up to become someone else. You must grow up to become the best version, the ideal visualization of who you want to be. So remember that all the decisions you made today or tomorrow or in the past, they must all come down to you. Now, my final point, be kind to yourself. Self-discovery is a tumultuous journey with ups and downs, peaks and valleys, and a seesaw of emotions. And as humans, we grow, we change, we develop, we evolve. And because of that, our values shift. Our perceptions of life change. We alter. And you must accept that. You must embrace all your changes, all your growth. You must allow yourself to change and have different ideologies because as you emerge in different environments, as you meet new people, your values in life could change as well. They could be heavily influenced. And sometimes you feel frustrated or aggravated that you don't fully understand who you are. However, keep exploring. Stay committed to your self-discovery journey. Keep exploring, trying new things, step out of your comfort zone so you can understand yourself more. And because of that, we must understand that there is no end to self-discovery. Although I'm in the stage talking on and on about self-discovery, the truth is there is no end. The only thing we can do is explore ourselves, but, there will be, but as we grow and we change, we can never keep up with all the changes and all the development that we experience as human beings. So all you could do is just stay committed and continue exploring. Stay hungry for knowledge. Stay curious of who you are. Keep asking questions about your values. Don't be, feel, don't be so constricted to society standards. Don't feel afraid to take the leap. Don't feel afraid to question what you may think is impossible. Don't feel afraid to attempt what you may think is unattainable. Keep learning. Keep exploring. Stay hungry. Stay foolish. Thank you.